And now set to make his way to the ring, Chunky James Dickel. G bro, fly Holly grow chicks to my Hollywood shows. And I wanna tell you something that you probably should know. This that slum dog, millionaire, Bollywood flow, and uh my real friends never hear it from me. Fake friends write the It is 440 local time here in Boston, which means it's 940 in the evening on a Saturday night in London, England right now. This fight being televised, televised live in the UK as a proud country watches to see whether James DeGale can become the first British boxer to win both an Olympic gold medal and a championship title. Some 200 fans from his hometown London have even flown here to take in the fight. DeGale told us he's been thinking about winning a championship ever since he stepped to the top of that Olympic podium back in 2008. And now making his way to the ring, the resurrected Andre Dura. Thirty-one-year-old Andre Durrell learned how to box back in elementary school. Walking with him, wearing a Muhammad Ali t-shirt, is his grandfather, Leon Lawson, who was a sparring partner of Ali. Lawson taught both Andre and his younger brother, Anthony, how to box, but Andre's boxing career was almost ended after he was victimized by an illegal blow in March of 2010. It was nearly two years before he was able to recover from that hit and return to boxing. He told us yesterday that time was pure hell, but he now believes he's been able to turn that experience into a positive. He's won all five of his fights since returning. And a look at the tale of the tape brought to you by Corona. The heights are the same. Durrell, though, with a two-inch reach advantage. And the rules, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. Can't be saved by the bell in any round if the fight is stopped because of an accidental foul before the completion of round four, it will be a no decision. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome. Live on NBC, this is Premier Boxing Champions, the main event, 12 rounds of action for the Super Middleweight Championship. The three judges at ringside, Dan Fitzgerald, Alan Davis, and Howard Foster and the referee in charge of the action, Leo Gerstel. And now, first, introducing the red corner. He wears the black and gold. The Olympic gold medalist brings a near-perfect professional record with 20 victories, only one loss, and 14 victories by way of knockout from Hammersmith, England, Chunky James DeGale. And across the ring, out of the blue corner, he wears the white and silver. The U.S. Olympic bronze medalist as a professional stands near perfect as well. 24 victories, just one loss with 16 wins by knockout from Flint, Michigan, the resurrected Andre Durrell. Hey guys, you went over the rules in the dressing room, okay? You want a nice, clean fight, obey my commands at all times, all right? Touch them up, good luck to both of you. Good, good, good. Andre Durrell, 2009, he lost his world title shot to Carl Froch of Great Britain. Another Brit stands in his way today. James DeGale, he has fought here as an amateur. This is his U.S. Pro debut. He has over 200 fans here to cheer him. There is another British invasion in Boston this time around, and we'll see how it turns out in this super middleweight title fight. It's very important that 
Darrell introduces Jabs to show to show the gal how you know that he's ready, that he has speed. And Ray, one of the things that DeGale was talking about yesterday, he said as long as he stays in the southpaw position, Durrell, he knows he's going to box him. If he switches to orthodox, he knows he's going to bang with him. At least that's the scouting report that DeGale has. Well, as long as he's effective, as long as he's throwing punches, I don't care what size, left or right, he's on, as long as he throws combinations. And a nice shot to the body by Durrell. Beautiful counter left uppercut there by Andre Durrell. You saw him slide back just a tad, land that perfectly placed left uppercut. Definitely put James on the back heels a little bit. Nice shot by Andre Durrell. And you see Kenny, when they're standing at this distance right here, it's gonna play to Andre Durrell's advantage. He's at the range and the distance that he likes there and he can fire off those quick combinations and. Uh, Make James get a little off balance. DeGale went in close for a moment. Darrell will have none of that. Both fighters are a little tight right now. They, they're still trying to figure each other out. See what works. As most would expect in a fight this big, only one loss between them. Very similar in many ways. Some nice exchange along the ropes. What was it like to be in a title fight, Ray? And early going, no matter how good you are, how are you feeling with the butterflies? Well, it's all about winning and your, your heart rate races high and you're thinking about just landing punches. Both fighters just have to calm down a little bit. Flicking out the jab, Durrell. See both guys very focused, the look in both guys' faces. They definitely want this fight and, uh, you know, trying to impose the will on one another here in this first round. A lot of feeling out, a lot of use of the jab by both guys. Good idea from both camps. They know each other well. Going back to watching them as amateurs all the way through their pro career. Great scouting reports on Durrell and DeGale. As the final seconds of round one in this super middleweight fight takes down, it's scheduled for 12. DeGale, a gold medalist in 2008 in Beijing. Durrell, a bronze medalist, 2004 in Athens. He got the bronze, lost to a pretty good fighter named Golovkin in the semifinals of that 19, uh, 2004 Olympics. Here we go with round two. Less than 10 punches landed in that fight, in that first round. You talk about the feeling out process, guys. Well, you will see now both guys will release a lot of punches now because they're both are relaxed. They know each other's rhythm, Tommy. It's all about putting those together now. And I think it's very important too, Ray, that whenever Andre gets in those clinches with James DeGale, that he doesn't stand too straight up. You saw in the first round, he took a couple of those uh, looping left hooks and right uppercuts from James, so he's got to make sure to stay crouched in those clinches. Steve Farhood, with us as always, scored the first round 10-9 in favor of Durrell. Durrell in the white trunks. Went from a slight favorite to pretty much even. Curiosity about how DeGale would be able to handle his speed as he faced anyone as fast as Durrell. That was one of the big questions coming in. But again, there's always questions when you have someone from a different country coming over to fight. Yeah, you do, and you saw a second ago, Durrell got caught by a nice right uppercut by James DeGale, and then he came right back with a beautiful left hand, letting him know, hey, you touch me, I'm gonna touch you right back. Let's go to the corner, check in with Daniel. And the same, the same advice that Chris Bird gave Andre Durrell was throw the left over the, over the right hand of, Dan, of DeGale. And he has done that. You can see he's cut him. So he's been very successful thus far. Looking over that right eye, there is blood on the right eye of DeGale. Swelling a little bit under the eye as well. Beautiful overhand left by Andre Durrell. He's timing the right jab at James DeGale, Kenny, and he caught him with a good shot. You see a nice cut on the right eye of James DeGale that could definitely determine the outcome of this fight and how it's going to be played. And Durrell more aggressive. Well, so far, DeGale has maintained his composure from being cut. And normally, when a fight is cut for the very first time, he uh, has a tendency to freak out. He seems to be quite poised. But perhaps Ray still another round that he's losing. So, you know, Steve gave uh, 
Andre Durrell the first round. I've got him ahead so far in the second round. So James has got to do something to get himself in this fight in the next couple of rounds. Uh, Durrell continues to fire the jab. A nice uppercut. Just missed really connecting there, but it has been a strong round for Durrell, Sugar. Well, see, Durrell now is really setting this man up. Same thing BG said, the fact that he, he's putting his Oh, my God! Durrell is down! DeGale oh. caught him! And Andre Durrell goes to the canvas! It turned just like that! Second time in his career, he's down, oh, he's, and he's, he's hurt! He's, he's hurt. Gale is charging in! Durrell says no, but you see the count. Come to me. Knocked down twice now. Only one time prior. And DeGale goes in. And the round comes to an end. Yeah, this first round, very important, Ray, that he kind of takes a moment to recollect himself and recompose. Watch out for the left hand of DeGale. Move away from it. Move to his left, away from the DeGale left hand. Round three underway, and all the momentum changed with two big punches from DeGale in that second round. Two knockdowns. DeGale might not have the speed. He might not have the athleticism of Andre Durrell, but you saw with a perfectly timed overhand left that can change the whole complexion of the fight, Kenny. BJ, we looked at the scouting report yesterday. You and Ray were looking at film, and you saw that left that could loop in there with such power. But I noticed that when, when DeGale got in close, he, he dropped that big uh, left hand. But there, he caught his man coming in. That was a huge round for DeGale. And if you remember, the beginning of the round was all Andre Durrell. He had cut James DeGale. He was in control, and one punch can change the fight at any time. It was first the big left that knocked him down. Then he followed it back up. Durrell shaking so much he wasn't Too sure he was even knocked down. Now Durrell comes back. And this can happen a lot of times in a fight. You score a knockdown, then after that you look to load up. James DeGale's got to remember, let the combinations go. That's the best way to get to Andre Durrell. What happens when a fight... When the fighter goes down, the other opponent who dropped him, he has a tendency to, to outpunch himself, throw too many shots, become arm weary. The snap on that jab once again from Durrell. Appears to be regaining all of his composure. And a good left by Durrell. Beautiful catch and counter, very basic move, but he did it very well. His timing was perfect on that. Let's check in with Daniel Jacobs. Well, right now it seems as if the corner wants Andre to use his boxing ability at the moment. Coming in, it's probably a bad idea, and they're telling him to use his speed, use his movement, use his defense, and make that the first initial if he wants to get the victory. Thanks, Daniel. Under a minute to go in this third round. Kenny, if you're in the corner, Andre Durrell, this round is playing out as almost as perfect as it possibly could because he's allowed himself space and distance to regain his legs, regain his senses a little bit, and he might even be winning this round, controlling it with the jab. Good advice from the corner, Durrell. He's, uh, yeah, keep his head clear, use his boxing ability. And DeGale tags him again with the left and another left. A good left, and that has idled Durrell. Durrell hugging up. The gal with a nice left again. Two problems with that. Andre pulling back with his hands down and moving directly into the left hand of James DeGale. He's to go the other way, Kenny. Darrell with a good round, but DeGale closing out strong here to end round three. Time. Round four underway. It's scheduled for 12. Darrell in the white. Anthony Hanshaw knocked Darrell down May 2008 in the first round. Darrell got back up to win by TKO in the fifth round. He was knocked down twice here in the second round today by DeGale. So he's been down before. I don't know if he's been hit as hard as that before in knockdown, though, as DeGale him. You know, I mentioned the ways uh, to, to victory for uh, Darrell was the jab. But he's not using the jab, and DeGale is getting inside big time. 
And we see something very interesting right here. Anthony Durrell, Durrell actually switched to the orthodox stance instead of the southpaw stance. So he's trying something different here in round four. Both of them have. Let's check in now with Steve Farhood. How are you scoring it so far, Steve? Well, Kenny, the first three rounds of this fight are a reminder of how quickly things can change in a fight. D Durrell, I think, won the first round, cut the Gale in the second round, then all of a sudden two knockdowns. So that round goes 10-7. For DeGale and the, the momentum carried over to the third round. DeGale landed the bigger shot, so I have him comfortably ahead by three points at this point. Thanks, Steve, as always, and wow, how things can turn around. We were talking about the cut over the eye and how would DeGale handle the quickness of Durrell and two big punches change things. And now they come out with an orthodox stand, both guys. And right back at it. DeGale not giving any time there to Durrell after the referee was explaining something. Veteran move right there. He saw Durrell was not protecting himself. The referee said continue, and he jumped right in and landed a nice stiff jab on Andre Durrell. Well, Durrell switched over to the right, and DeGale said when he does that, he expects him to come out banging. We didn't see that as much, so Durrell back now to his natural style as a southpaw. You see the snap and the power of DeGale. I mean, his punches, his, even his jab is able to knock the head back of Andre Durrell. Ray, I completely agree. Both guys have power. DeGale definitely showing more so far, but I think the problem is Andre's defense has been a little susceptible so far. He's dropping his hands, and the punches of DeGale are having more of an effect because there's no defense. Also, the speed now of DeGale is starting to come through, and the accuracy of his punches. So very important for Andre if he wants to get back in this fight. Stand in the middle of the ring. Use the jab, use the boxing ability, and keep your hands up when DeGale rushes in. He could be back in this fight in a couple rounds. And as Steve said, with the scoring, especially being knocked down twice in that second round, Darrell has to start thinking about picking up some rounds quickly here. He does, but he's only got to do it one round at a time, Kenny. Just put round four in the bank, round five, and then the momentum of the fight can uh, flow in his favor. So, got to be smart here. And not allowed to Gale to close out strong. He did that in the third round, not so much here in the fourth. Darrell bouncing back with a solid round. Round four scheduled for 12. It's now in the books. And there's Andre Durrell, knocked down twice in the second. Big turning point in this fight very early. Let's check in now with Paul. Kenny, I'm in the DeGale corner with his trainer, Jim McDonald. What's the best thing James is doing right now? He's just boxing a smart fight. He's got a very intelligent boxing in front of him. And he's messing him for school, which no one's ever done before. And um, James is boxing really well, so he's just got to keep it going. What is it you'd like for him to do better right now? Uh, mate, I can't talk for you. We'll catch up with him later, Kenny. All right, thanks, Paul. Jim McDonald telling us yesterday when he started talking to DeGale right after he'd won the gold medal, they had their eye on a world title to become the first British gold medal winner and then world champion. That was DeGale's hope, and he's getting his chance today. Break, break, break. Come on, guys. Nice move by James DeGale. You saw him double jab, and then he squatted down like he was coming to the body. He tried to come back up to the top. He just barely missed, but good move by James, and uh, it's only a matter of time before those kind of punches land, Ken. I like the way that DeGale is really using the ring, taking his time, picking his shot. means just looking at certain areas, jab, down to the body, to the head, and there with the left hand, trying to get his man to fall asleep. But it's very deceptive, Ray, because you see how James drops down when he shoots that first jab to the body, and then he fires up top. Very confusing and very difficult to defend both the body and the head. And again, DeGale may be surprising some people here today, Ray, even though he comes in here with a record of 20 and 1. Well, he surprised me, and he impressed me with, with what he's done to Andre uh, Durrell. Um, put him down. But he has to be very careful not to get too careless. Swelling under DeGale's right eye. Once again, let's check in with Daniel. Well, Team Darrell seems as if they're very frustrated at the moment because they want Darrell to come in with his hands up while he's punching because he's punching and keeping his hands down, which will allow him to get counterpunched. So if he keeps his hands up, he'll be a little bit more successful. We'll see what happens. All right, thanks, Daniel. Remember, back in the early part of this fight, DeGale had the cut and some swelling around his right eye, and then he took off in the second round with those two knockdowns and turned it all around. Yeah, he did. He changed the whole tempo of the fight at that moment, Kenny. The left hand set up by the jab to the body. Andre Durrell needs to get back at the center of the ring. And using those combinations and that speed from a distance, he's allowing James to get too close to him, and it's having an effect. 
Degel continues to control the tempo here in round five. I was really anticipating Andre Durrell to be the boxer. It seemed like James Degel is really using the ring a lot. Using that jab, set his man up, and trying to drop that left hand. And DeGale pushing the action along the ropes one more time. DeGale, a very confident fighter right now as round five comes to an end. It culminates with game five of the Eastern Conference Final between Tampa Bay and New York on NBCSN. It's a championship Sunday on NBC. It will be a championship Saturday for either Darrell or DeGale. Kenny. All right, thanks, Liam. And there's again a look at James Chunky DeGale. No irony in that name, huh? Chunky, that's a boyhood name. He's carried it with him since he was about seven or eight, where he says he was a little heavy when he first walked in a gym. But now he would put him, he wished he was called Fit DeGale. Look right the, now he could be called the guy winning this fight, you think? Look at the combination he's throwing, Kenny. I mean, he's, starting to, he's really starting to put his punches together very, very well. DeGale getting that last round from Steve Farhood. Kenny Rice, Ray Leonard, B.J. Flores here ringside. Glad that you're with us. Super middleweight bout, title on the line. Darrell coming in here, maybe a favorite in some people's eyes. Most thought, though, it was a toss-up. He in the white trunks, and he tries to take the action now to the Gale once again. And you can see the look on Darrell's face right when he came out for round six here. He wanted to get something done. Maybe showing it a bit too much. Have a little more of a poker face, Andre Darrell. Come out, flick your jab, set some things up, and uh, don't make it quite so obvious you want to attack. At what point, Ray, do you start thinking about, has the other guy put up more points than me? And again, those two knockdowns so big back in the second round. A fighter knows when he's losing. A fighter knows when he's behind on points. It's, it's just the way it is. It's instinctive, intuitive. And the key is, again, to not rush too much in, but you got to be aggressive at the same time. Well, you have to do it all. You have to be aggressive. You have to throw, the punch, throw enough punches and dominate. And Gale comes at one more time, Durrell. And you see a little puffiness here on the left side of Durrell's face now. And a lot of blood from the nose and mouth of Andre Durrell. Kenny, I'm going to tell you right now, he's not used to tasting his own blood. Normally he's in fights, he's dominating. So we're going to see a lot of resolve and a lot of heart from Andre Durrell down the stretch if he wants to win this fight. Yeah, you can see the blood now from the nose and the swelling over on the left side. We just saw him come in with the lead left hand. He's got to be careful not to load up. Use the right jab, set the common up, combinations up, and try to take it one round at a time because he's running out of time. And going to the corner is DeGale. Got in a nice body shot. They move back out into the center. This is really good to bring generalship um, for James DeGale. He's really taking advantage of the ring, taking advantage of where he is now in the fight. Dominant. He really... He's doing a good, good job here. And he switches over to Orthodox. And on. Coming up, Liam will be talking with Anthony Durrell, Andre's younger brother and former world champ himself. Get his take on how his older brother is faring here against DeGale. DeGale should stay southpaw. If it's not, what they say, if it's not broke, don't, if it's not broken, and Darrell gets in one of his best punches. As the round comes to an end, Darrell closes strong. All right, thanks, Liam. And what do you think there? Was that just one brother rooting for him, his brother? Or do you think he has some good advice there, assessment of this fight as we go into round seven? Well, he has to be aggressive without question. And he has to take it to, to James to go. He has to really be aggressive and stay on top of him to get those points back. I completely agree, Ray. He's got to be aggressive, but he's got to make sure that he doesn't try to walk in because he's taking those big shots when he's looking too much for the punch. He's got to set it up. Darrell landed a big shot near the end of that last round. Steve giving the last round to DeGale, though, again, 10-9. Let's check in again with Paul Burmeister. Kenny, I had a chance to talk to James DeGale on Thursday. He said, you know, we're actually very similar fighters. Slippery, crafty, tricky. I said, what's the big difference then? He said, I have more heart, and you'll see that after round six. All right, thanks, Paul. Well, we'll see it coming up soon. And DeGale has put on a show here that may be a little surprising. Not that it was anything expected other than a close fight here, but the fact that DeGale has at times dominated this fight against Andre Durrell. Well, I was in DeGale's, James DeGale's uh, dressing room before the fight, and he had a 
quite a few people back there, and he was calm. <laughs> and, and normally for a championship fight, you know, you're pretty uptight. I don't want anyone around. Well, as we said earlier, it's another British invasion here in Boston. About 200 of his family and friends have made the trip across the pond to cheer him on. Durrell has him against the ropes, and a good combination series there from Andre Durrell. Let's check in now with Daniel. Well, Team DeGale seems to be very pleased with what he's doing. They're very happy with James as far as his boxing ability, his movement. They want him to start sitting on his punches just a little bit more to hopefully try to get Andre Durrell out of there. And DeGale talking a bit to Durrell now. And you can see him right there, Kenny. He's trying to bait him. Andre Durrell has to make sure and move to his left, away from the overhand left of James DeGale, because he's trying to set him up for that shot. You see that redness around the eye and nose area on the right side of DeGale? That's been there since back in round one. When Durrell started out strong, that was his best round for Durrell. Had a nice round in the fourth, but it's been DeGale throughout this fight, including those two knockdowns. We can't emphasize that enough. And now Durrell has him against the ropes. And Durrell trying to get combinations, but covering up is DeGale. DeGale blocked most of those punches with his hands. But he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be in the corner. It's given Andre Durrell momentum though, Ray, and it's giving him confidence to get back into this fight. He needs to get back, get back to the center of the ring. Two good rounds in a row for Andre Durrell. Final seconds, round seven. Scheduled for 12. Durrell trying to come back here against DeGale. As we get back to live action in this round eight, Andre Durrell in the white trunks. James DeGale, the opponent. DeGale has been strong throughout this fight. Two knockdowns back in the second round. Let's check in with Paul. Kenny, I'm here with Tucson heavyweight champion Chris Bird, assistant trainer for Andre Durrell. I see you uh, clapping and applauding a little more here the last five minutes. What do you see that you like? Well, he, he's staying more relaxed. He's not pulling out, and that's a great thing. That's what he's getting caught with. And we've been working on that, don't pull out, because he throw wide shots, and he's, he's pretty strong in there. But when he throws combinations, when he get close, nobody can defend that. It's hard. And, and the main thing about, about this fight is to come back after the knockdowns, win, try to win every round, every round, so you can win the fight. The knockout will come if the knockout will come if it come. That's don't go for it. Win the round. That's the main thing. So that, that's what he's that's what he tried to do now. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Paul and. Uh, Chris Bird's father, Joe, a legend in Flint, Michigan. Andre Durrell's first competitive fight at eight years of age was in Joe's gym. And then he went on a course and trained under his grandfather since then. Yeah, and you look at the power punches so far, DeGale still, but it was Durrell punching in combination. He threw a fight high, 54 punches in round seven. Yeah, Kenny, I love what Chris Bird said in the corner there. Don't pull out with your hands down because it's exactly what he's getting caught with, and we talked about that in the pre-fight meetings. Andre Durrell having himself a nice round eight, working himself back into this fight here, but got to continue to use the combinations. Steve Farhood scoring that last round for Durrell. Again, Durrell much busier in that round. You know, I see the Gale's hands are down. I mean, I mean, he's re naturally he's relaxed with what happened, but he should keep those hands a little higher. And not give away those rounds against the ropes. That's unnecessary <laughs> deduction of rounds. And if I'm in the corner of James DeGale here, I'm not alarmed, but I'm a little disturbed that this could be the potential third round in a row that he might be given to, uh, to Andre Durrell here. That was a good right by Durrell. So I'm going to want James DeGale to step on the gas just a tad more to regain control of this, uh, this fight. Be exactly. He'll be a little more aggressive. Beautiful left hand by James DeGale that just missed. Andre brought his shoulder up a little bit and rolled with the punch, but he's still got to be careful that overhand left with James because, like we saw earlier, it could change the whole fight. Light heavyweights coming up. Rodriguez against Baker. Final seconds, round eight. Durrell coming back. Durrell switching over to Orthodox as well. That means he's going to bang, so his opponent thinks, and that's what he's trying to do here. As the round comes to an end, and this picture right here of that man, Leon Bumper Lawson, grandfather and trainer of Andre Durrell, and one-time sparring partner of several greats, including the greatest, Muhammad Ali. And wouldn't you like to read his book of the stories he could tell? He tells a few 
Andre and his brother Anthony said they've heard just about every Ali story possibly told. As we go now, live action again, nine nine rounds here. We're into this fight. It's scheduled for 12. Steve Farhood unofficially giving Darrell that last round. That means he has won the last two unofficially. Darrell in the white trunks. Had knocked down only one time in his career and then was knocked down twice by James DeGale back in round two. And a more purposeful fighter here is Darrell. Let's check in with Daniel. Well, the team DeGale is very happy once again with his performance, but they don't want Darrell to take the momentum. He's throwing a little bit more punches and bunches now, and they don't want the judges to look at that and start giving him rounds. So they, they want him to keep up the pace and sit down on his punches. And I completely agree with what Daniel's saying. Uh, Durrell's definitely got the momentum now. You see how the complexion of this fight has changed. Andre Durrell gets off his stool, immediately goes to the other side of the ring and lets Daniel and lets uh, James DeGale know, hey, I'm going to fight you this round, and uh, he's doing exactly that. What is DeGale doing differently since being so strong and aggressive early on, Ray? Well, he's also being more aggressive, but he's really picking his shots. He's not winging his shots. When you wing your shots, you, get, you can actually get caught with a counter punch. I think James is being a little too lackadaisical. I think he fell in love with the knockdowns early and he kind of loaded up a little bit and he allowed Andre Durrell just to get a little bit of rhythm. And sometimes that's all it takes and he's taking control of the last three rounds on my scorecard. When he was trying to get him out of there, he, I think he exerted himself to uh, a large degree. And coming back with a combination to Gale. Nice right uppercut by James DeGale. Andre's got a tendency to square up just a tad on the inside. James DeGale took advantage of that with a nice short right uppercut. It's been a couple of rounds since we've seen that kind of action from DeGale. Under a minute to go here in round nine. Darrell is throwing twice the punches. <laughs> Right now is DeGale, and another good punch by Durrell. A nice hard overhand left by Andre Durrell. Good punches by him, and uh, you know, he's really working himself back into this fight, Kenny. So if I'm the corner of uh, James DeGale, like we talked about, I'm going to do something to get my fighter back in after this next round. You see the confidence. He smacked himself a couple of times there, did Durrell. Come on, I'm ready. Well, DeGale is trying to throw that big shot again. He's, trying, he's looking for one big shot. He has put those together. Put those punches together. And it's the perfect time for Andre Durrell to take advantage of the defensive lapse of James DeGale. When you swing a big shot, you're going to miss big. Make the guy pay after you miss. It's Durrell's turn to talk as well to DeGale. It was DeGale doing the talking early on. Now Durrell feels like he's earned that chance. And possibly has picked up another round in his favor. We go in now to the 10th round. It's scheduled for 12. Super middleweight championship on the line. Andre Durrell, pride of Flint, Michigan, in the white. And James DeGale trying to become the first British fighter to win gold in the Olympics and be a world champion. Let's check in with Steve Farhood. How are you scoring this, Steve? The difference in this fight, Kenny, is the knockdown in round two because there's really been a role reversal in the sense that in the early rounds, it was Durrell who was throwing one punch at a time. Since the middle of the fight, it's been DeGale throwing one punch at a time. When your hands are in your pockets, the judges are not going to give you the rounds. So all the momentum at this point is Andre Durrell. Thanks, Steve. And the punch is now through nine. DeGale still with just a slight lead, a one-punch lead coming into this round over Durrell. That's how much it has changed since it was DeGale controlling the action pretty much through the first half of this fight. Yeah, and a lot of heart and resolve by Andre Durrell. Everybody that I talked to before the fight thought that James DeGale would take over down the stretch. And it's funny to see Andre Durrell taking over because there were questions about the Andre Durrell heart, about his stamina, and uh, I think he's proven to a lot of people that he's got both of those things. As we heard from Paul earlier talking about his discussion with DeGale, DeGale said it it will be me. Stop, I've got the heart stop. in this fight, but like you say, Darrell's showing a lot of it now. Let's check in again with Daniel Jacobs. Well, Kenny, as Darrell comes back to the corner, he yells to his corner, he ain't catching me no more. So his confidence is excelling, and as you can see, he's doing just what his corner wants him to do and push DeGale back. He's having good success this round. All right, thanks, Daniel. And right now, Darrell has turned it up to 11 in the last part of this fight. What about his performance right now, Ray? Well, he's still trying to uh, throw some shots, throw some combinations. And this is where he normally does well, inside. And that was a nice little left. He slides in there as well as once again, he is the aggressor putting the action against the ropes. 
Hit him on the back of the head. Box. And Kenny, just the momentum of this fight has completely changed. It went from James DeGale being the stalker to now Andre Durrell doing all the stalking. And this fight has really tightened up on my scorecard. I think these last, these rounds, these rounds, you know, very deciding factors. Well, like Steve said, judges will take a look if you've got your hands in your pocket, if you're not the aggressive fighter, and that's what we're seeing here, or not seeing here in this case, from De, uh, DeGale over the last couple of rounds. Well, they have to stay aggressive and stay focused on this fight. It's a big fight. And again, there's Darrell. Darrell again pushing the action and literally pushing DeGale against the ropes. And he did something very interesting. He shot a combination, and before James had a chance to counter, Darrell put his body weight on him and pushed him into the ropes. Referee called break. Exchange won by Andre Darrell. That's some old school. Final seconds, round 10. Another good round for Darrell as the momentum continues to swing his way. That was to Carl Frotch of Great Britain in 2009. DeGale lost his only fight back in May of 2011 to George Groves. He has won 10 straight since. Darrell in the white as we start round 11. And he has been on a roll over these last five rounds. Steve Farhood scoring the last round for Darrell, bringing this fight unofficially to an even 94-94. You know, if you look at the knockdowns, you say, wow, that's because it was such a, a shocker and an impact. But it's, these rounds are pretty close. And I think, Ray, you know, also on top of that, the knockdowns can make it seem like it's a huge deficit on the scorecards. But, you know, five rounds later, Andre Durrell is back in this fight, and he's got the momentum right now going into the championship rounds. Durrell has simply been picking apart DeGale over these last few rounds and mounting up the points. Break, break, break. And it's not that he's been dominating James DeGale, but he's just been doing enough to win these rounds and uh, seize control of the fight. So on my scorecard, whoever wins these last two rounds uh, could very easily win the fight. It would appear, Ray, that that's what it's down to, a fight of really two halves. First half of the fight to DeGale, second half is to Durrell. Well, the corner needs to say, hey, listen, these last two rounds are deciding factors. We need, we need to win these convincingly. Right, right, guys. Hands off the rope. And I think James DeGale has moved, he's boxed, he's been too passive the last five rounds. He's not going to win across the pond, over here, being passive and being content like that. He's got to be offensive and he's got to be aggressive. Durrell appears ready every time that DeGale tries to move in, Ray. What? Here he's, now he's, wow, great. Oh, some good punches there. And the best punch combination in a while for DeGale. And Andre's got to be careful that he doesn't try to catch all those punches. He's got to move his head and not block them all because they still hurt. Well, Durrell had been doing a good job with his defense. Nice flurry by James DeGale there. And you see a bit of a, not confused, but, you know, that definitely startled Andre Durrell, and he hasn't let his hands go for the last 30 seconds. And now Durrell comes back and pushes the action against the ropes. I look at uh, Andre Durrell and his recuperative powers is, is fantastic. Oh, because that's, that's the same shot he only gets dropped by. Yeah, DeGale shoots that short left end on Durrell. Best round in a while now for DeGale. Break, stop punching. And I think James DeGale realized that he's lost a few rounds in a row. And he wanted to get a bit of momentum back and make sure he could, uh, you know, get this fight to win. And if this fight is as close as we think it is, how precious is every point right now? Power late. Yeah. As we start this, the final round for the championship. I think this round here is a decide, uh, deciding factor here. I completely agree, Ray. On my scorecard, Darrell needs this round almost to get a draw. If the Gale wins this round, I think he can uh, escape with a very close decision. Steve Farhood scoring the Gale 10-9 that last round. The Gale with a one-point edge unofficially coming into this. 2.38 to go in the championship fight. I'll be a little bit more conservative with, my, with the Gale. He, he, his hands are down too low. But he has good legs. Darrell trying to mount a remarkable comeback after being knocked down twice in the second round. 
big round for DeGale. DeGale dominating the early part of this fight. Darrell coming back in the latter stages of this fight. At stake, super middleweight championship of the world. First try at it for DeGale. Darrell lost a tough split decision five and a half years ago. His only title try. Come on, guys. And DeGale, as he told us yesterday, when he got off the podium after getting the gold medal in 2008, he made up his mind then. His goal was to become the first British fighter to ever win Olympic gold and be a world champ. Is he a minute 38 away from that? He's very close to doing it, Kenny. And Andre Durrell really needs to step on the gas if he wants to get out of here with a decision or a draw. He's not letting his hands go enough here in this 12th round, so he needs to pick up the output and make sure he gives himself a chance when that final bell rings. And DeGale this going to it. work on the body. And James DeGale acting more like the fighter who wants to win the fight in this 12th round. Andre Durrell's got to do something bigger here. And DeGale acting, Ray, more like the fighter we saw in the first five rounds of this fight. Unbelievable. This Ray, is, stop punching. Stop punching. This is where heart comes in. This is when determination comes in. It becomes a factor. How bad do you want to win? From the seventh round on, everything in Durrell's corner, it seemed to be going. And then that last round, DeGale starts coming back, and here they are. Toe to toe here to decide the championship. Oh, that's a good shot. Good right hand. Good shots, good counters. DeGale really showing championship to class here, Kenny. He let off the gas just enough. He saved a little in the tank, and he's won the last two rounds. DeGale trying to put the punctuation mark on this and make history. He said that's what drives him to be the gold medalist and to be the world champ and to wave the Union Jack here because he is so proud of the tradition of the super middleweight champs from Great Britain. There have been nine of them. Will he become number 10? Has Darrell done enough in this fight to come back? Final seconds of the championship fight. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go into your judges' scorecards. Your first judge at ringside, Dan Fitzgerald scores the fight 114 to 112. Your second judge, Alan Davis, sees it 117 to 109. And your third and final judge, Howard Foster, sees the fight 114 to 112. All for the winner by unanimous decision. And now the new super middleweight champion, Chunky James DeGale.